Hi everybody, this is Night All Fibers, a knitting podcast. This is my mom, Brenda. This is my daughter, Rachel. It is episode 49. Today is May 28th, 2020. And, and we will have our social media down below. We are coming to you from Houston, Texas, so welcome friends, new and returning. Yep. <clears throat> I um, forgot to mention this is my co-host, Kirby. And this is Abby right here. <laughs> She's kind of shrinking off screen. Um, and we will have a giveaway to announce at the end. Yeah. So what are you drinking today? Water. Water. Yummy mm -hmm. water. Your dad decided that he wanted to get a Berkey water filter system. Yeah, our Britta <clears throat> pitcher was kind of getting old and wore out and kind of beat up. and Yeah, couldn't get it clean anymore. Yeah. So he says, all the preppers use these Berkey water filter systems. Yeah. I'm like, okay, go, go ahead and order one. So he got the travel size one. Oh my goodness, y'all. It is the best water I have ever tasted. Yeah, it takes all the chemicals out. And if you, like, Google how many chemicals are actually in tap water. And heavy metals. And heavy metals. It's a lot. So. Yeah. So I highly recommend it. They are a little pricey, but, um, hey, if it makes him happy and we get good, clean water to drink, mm -hmm. I'm fine with that. Yeah. Okay, so I think that's about it. Why don't we jump right into stitch by stitch. Okay. Okay, so I have three projects I've been working on. How about you? Well, I realized I have three, but only two have gotten a lot of love, but I will show the third one, so. Okay. Three. Okay, I think I'll start. Okay. Okay, so I have been working on the Neville Long Bottom Socks. So this is a Night Owl Fiber colorway. Oh my gosh, that is so pretty. Yeah, I really love how you have two different browns and two different blues and then the two different greens, but they're not next to each other. So it really is fun to knit up. I, let's see. I knit one repeat and then I set it down and I made myself finish the sweater. Um, I was so close to finishing the sweater I was just like, I'm gonna reward myself with the sock cast on. Can I have your leftovers? Yeah, absolutely. Because your dad wants socks out of that. He saw that colorway okay. and he's like, oh, I want socks out of that one. Yeah, well... And that, he doesn't do that very often. No, he doesn't. In that case, I might just do the ribbing from here on out. Yeah, so, awesome. Yeah, he did like it. I caked it up and he if not, I'll was buy asking one. about it. No. Or I'll work I'll work for one. I'll do lots of work and you can buy an for extra yarn. for me. Okay. Yeah, I'll work for yarn. Well, I do have some listings that need to be made later, so. Okay, I'll work for yarn. How's that? <laughs> that sounds perfect to me. Then I can have the leftovers for <laughs> It sucks for me. That works if you use a whole hank for his shorty socks, because he likes shorty socks. And I, And you yeah. have leftovers for yourself. Okay. Perfect yeah. deal. Okay, so Neville Longbottom. I'm connected, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have my little cannoli progress keeper on here just to mark the front. And I marked for my heel already. A 56 stitch count and a US 1 2.25 millimeter. Turkish cast on. I'm just kind of listing out the things I do for my socks because I know that we um, have some new viewers and I haven't mentioned it in a little while. And then I like to do the sew and bind off because that always makes it super stretchy. But I am gonna like the next shorty pairs I cast on are going to be a different method. I don't know if I'm gonna do them top down or something. I just need something different. I like to change it up. Yeah. For the longest time, it was always toe up, afterthought heel, mm -hmm. and now I'm into cuff down, heel flap and gusset. Yeah, I'm not sure if it'll yeah. like permanently change the style that I knit, but just at least change it for one pair, because I had issues with the last afterthought heel I've done, <laughs> and now I'm kind of like, I don't want to do afterthought heels, yeah. but I've had these two pairs started that will need them. And I know I can do them successfully, but I'm just ready for a change, at least temporarily. 
Uh, this colorway is available now until the 15th of June. Can't believe that we will be going into June in a couple days. I can't believe your sister is going to be 25 next month. Yeah. Where did that time go? Yeah, and she... that you're 23. It just blows my mind. Yeah, time. I don't know where it goes either. <sighs> okay. okay. I'm working on a pair of opal socks for my husband. I have made one row of progress just now. I am doing these cuff down and um, the reason I have two progress keepers on here is this little red cardinal, and you are a distraction Abby, <laughs> she is. Um, is helping me mark my rows so that I can double check with my counter, which I need to click a row, um, to make sure I have the exact number of rows Rather than putting in stitch markers every 10 rows, I'm just doing it this way for this time. He really liked the Umbrella Socks by Kay Jones. So I have marked on waist yarn because that's how I like to do it for Afterthought Heels. Mm -hmm. And I'll put an, an Umbrella Heel in this one. And then I'll work the way down the foot and do the Umbrella Toe, which is my absolute favorite toe to do. And I prefer to do the Umbrella Toe top down rather than cuff up. She is really begging for attention, I isn't know, she? I know, and I have 15 stitches to knit so that I can show my <laughs> next project. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, know why these have not gotten a lot of love. Maybe it's just that I'm over green right now and I'm into lots of purples because both of my other projects have more purple in them. A lot more. Yeah, so, and I'm not sure if I like the, this is a brand new pair of uh, Knitter's Pride Zing and I did not like the cord. I was thinking of changing them over to a one and a half, a 1.5, which is a 2.5 millimeter Knitter's Pride, or no, knit Carbons. There we go, Carbons, to see if that would, the cable would be okay. a little bit better, but I don't know, like I said, I only have one row progress on here. So, we'll see, we'll see. The things I had to do to get to the end of that needle, I had to hold them <laughs> up by my face. Um, these are a pair of shorty socks out of Regia yarn. I think the colorway is called Party. Um, it's one of my 50 grammars that was in my stash. I've talked about it a lot because the project has just hung on for quite a while. Languished. I think I was down here on my last, uh, on the last time we recorded. And now I have maybe four or five of the colorful stripes to go before I'm ready to do the sew and bind off. And then add afterthought heels to both. Uh, let's see, and here is the first one. You can get your little ladybug on that one. Yep. And see, now that I'm done talking about the project, Abby has yeah, left, left my lap. lap. She's left the building. Yeah. <laughs> She's a needy baby today. And now she wants back in my lap. Okay. My next pair, I was all the way up here last time. And this is a pair of Active. Is the brand of the yarn. I do not know the colorway name or number. I don't think it has a name, just numbers. But I have been in love with this one. It's mm -hmm. like a bouquet of flowers. Very floral. Yeah. Um, 64 stitches, heel flap and gusset. Uh, on my Hiya Hiya Sharps US 1 2.25 millimeter, and I love them. I do have something new. Let me grab the Crafty Foot Crafty Butterfly Creations. Have these little um, sheep, little sheep and rabbits. They are end keepers or end minders where you can wind your yarn around that so that you don't start knitting with your. And ends. it's easier to find the ends when you're ready to go in and weave everything Yeah, in. so I'm trying it out on this pair of socks and yeah. I like it. So yeah, I really am in love with this pair of socks. In fact, this is all I've knit on the last couple days. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't even been, I don't know. Usually I have a project on the kitchen table and I will just, you know, knit a row or two here or there. When I sit down, yeah. um, 
that hasn't been happening either lately so it is a beautiful um, movement of yarn it is beautiful yes I can't wait to have leftovers to put in my scrappy projects uh, my granny stripe blanket yeah yeah so move the stitch marker now now my pygmy owl is down here where it's supposed to be cool and I will do the umbrella toe with this one because that just seems to fit my toes so much better it's so much more comfortable so yeah, that is project number two. Okay, so my third and final project is the Cartography Sweater by Tin Can Knits. So the cord is a little small, so if you can see the design that's happening with that the color work. Pretty, very pretty. Yeah, so I have three contrast colors and one main color, the cream, copper, black, and gold. So autonomous, that's so you. Yeah, and I haven't really worked on this since I last showed it, but it has been a while since I've showed it, and it's about to get a lot of work done on it. You're gonna fly so, on that one. Yeah. Um, what yarn is it? It is a DK weight. Let's see if I have the labels. I was trying to hold on to the labels, but I don't have a full ball trendsetter yarn in the New York base and they come in 50 gram balls. So is that a worsted or a woolen spun? It is a woolen spun. Woolen spun, yes. I had to think that over because I know the terms but I can mix them up really easily. Yeah. So it's a lighter loftier yarn mm -hmm. and it feels really light just being knit Oh my gosh, it's very light. Yeah. You would think with all of those floats that it would be heavy, but it's very, very light. Yeah. I think I'm really close to splitting for the armholes. Yeah. So. Is that your steak panel right there? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, let's see. I would like to try steaking. Yeah, I mean, you can do it without it having to be a full color work sweater. You can just do a simple stocking yeah. knit one. I think that's what I'm going to do. And I... Just like a little cardigan. Mm -hmm. The first time I steaked it was a super wash indie dyed yarn, my own. Mm -hmm. And then one skein of casual fashion queen has the little fleece stitches. Um, and this I time am. I'll be steaking with a woolly wool mm -hmm. um, super wash. So it's supposed to steak better. And it's not like I had problems with the super wash. It'll just be interesting to see how the two different um, superwash versus non-superwash steaks and how yeah. it wears. Yeah. Okay, I have my So Faded by Andrea Mowry, and this has gotten a lot, a lot of love. Yeah. I have collar and both sleeves finished. Yay. No ends woven in. And I have started fading in my third color. Can you pull down? Yeah. So I think it's a really good gradual fade. Mm -hmm. So you have color one up here and then two and right, right. down here is where the third color is. Right. Starts. I just broke the second yarn and I'm just now starting to knit with the, the third color completely. The top one is from Candy Shop Yarns Lavender Lemonade. The second one is Private Time with My Yarn by Cherry Pie Cottage, and the third one is a completely new one. We did a trade. It is Sugar Plum mm -hmm. by Stranded Dye Works. Stranded Dye Works. This was Rachel's, and it was in her stash. As I got closer and closer to adding the third color, I was like, this has too much gray and blue in it, and not mm -hmm. the pops of pink and lavender. Yeah. So I asked Rachel if she had anything that would work, and she said, yeah, you know, I think I have that one from Stranded that would look really good in that. And it's so perfect. It is the absolute perfect yarn. So I gave her my Euphoria Knits skein. I reskeined yeah. it back up for her. So that I really a, loved that one. You did. So that one is yours now, and I have this one. Mm -hmm. And I sewed myself a little bento-type bag to hold mm -hmm. my cake of yarn in. These work great for yeah. when you have several different skeins of yarn you're working with at the same time to... Because mm. a big project bag is great, but sometimes your ends you can get just get a little... Yeah. yeah. So I just put together this little... It has a little snap. 
and the cake just fits right in there. Awesome. So, yeah. I don't know if anybody would be interested in any of these little bags. If so, mm -hmm. pop a comment down below. Maybe we'll add them to Rachel's shop if she would like me to do that for her. I would be happy to. Yeah. But here is, let's see, Progress Keeper way up here. So I've knit that much on the body plus finished off the... Which you did a little fading for the sleeves. Just a tiny bit. Yeah. I really enjoyed that yarn from Jenny. Mm -hmm. Private time with my yarn. That was, oh, I wanted to knit the rest of the sweater in it, but I didn't have enough. So, alas, the third color got added. Yep. And I am, I think that's why I haven't knit on those green socks. Because I have been so in love with this sweater. Yeah. I thought the the really pale lavender would be t would wash me out, but I don't think it does. And I think it's going to have enough um, fading in it that'll make it interesting, but not yeah. boring. So. I think so. That is my last stitch by stitch, and I am in love with it. Awesome! You may have a finished sweater by the next episode. That would be awesome. Yeah. That would be awesome. I'm really enjoying this in the evenings. Yeah. So yeah. This has taken over sock knitting. I've noticed that with it you. really, it really, really has, which surprises me because usually I'm constantly working on socks, mm -hmm. and socks have taken the back burner. Yeah. Are you using a US five or four? Oh, good question. I know I went down a size from the from other the one. Pattern. The other one. Okay. okay. Eyes don't fail me now. Let me see. A US five. Okay. And then I always put on the toggles. Yeah, to help keep you so from that, losing stitches. So that I don't lose stitches. Okay. So yeah, I went down a size because this is, this is super wash yarn. I know it will grow. It is, there is no cashmere in it. So if I do have to pop it in the dryer for just a tiny, tiny bit on a very, very low setting, I'm not going to felt it like I did the last one. Yeah. And keep an eye on it like every 10 minutes or so yeah. to make sure it hasn't yeah. felted. Yeah. So that is the last stitch, stitch by stitch that I have. Yep. So on to all stitch, stitch together. together. Okay, so we're all... We, okay, start over. We're back with all stitch together where we show finished objects. I really was wanting to do something different with my hands. And I went back to my very first craft that I ever learned. My grandmother taught me how to embroider when I was five years old. And mm -hmm. so I found the Super Herbs, um, Aunt Martha's Iron On Transfers, number 4001. And it's got oregano, thyme, sage, basil, cilantro, chive, mint, bay leaf, cumin, and rosemary. And yeah. I thought this would be perfect because we've been doing a lot of gardening. Yeah, and the herbs have pretty much taken over the herb garden. They have, but it's just been so much fun. So yeah. I found towels. Uh, oh, that must have been something else. So I cut them out and ironed them on uh, mm -hmm. to all of my towels. Yeah. And I made a little video of me doing that. The process of stamping the transfer Iron-ons. Iron-ons and, and that, yeah. And I have one that I have completely finished. Yeah. And here it is. I'll turn it this way. Mm -hmm. So I did the basil, and we have a basil plant on our patio, and Rachel yeah. loves it. I really do. I put basil in wraps and on pizza and yeah, all kinds of all things. all kinds of things. So the first one is done. I did iron it, but the hoop still left a little bit of a... Oh, yeah. It'll need a wash to get that. Or just a spritz. That's right, to get the ring out. To get the ring out. But yeah, I think the next one I'm going to do is the rosemary one. Mm -hmm. That's another very heavily used herb in our house. Yes. We use a lot, a lot of rosemary. Yeah. So yeah, I have my mother's... Um, she had an antique tin, round tin like it was for cookies or something that she kept all of her threads in and her project she was working on and I can't bear to use that use it risk anything risk, happening. Yeah, I 
the very last thing yeah. she was working on is in there and I just yeah I just like opening it up and looking at it and just remembering her fondly but I do have a little little pouch that I use and then I have a little um, floss keeper that the girls just sticker bombed when they were little yeah okay so now I have one finished object and it took me I checked 31 days to from start like little swatch and the neckline to finish it's beautiful and it is the meadow moon sweater by Jennifer Steingas and here is the sweater in all its finished glory with the color work on the sleeves I'll pop um, a the picture, picture in. in at the end of my um, test knit hanging on the wood fence in the back it fits her beautifully it really does and it has been blocked all the ends are woven in I do have a progress keeper on it still though so I knit this much I was right here on the last podcast so I finished up the body and then I did both, both sleeves. sleeves and I did helixel knit throughout the whole thing so you can tell there's slight tonality to the cinnamon oatmeal colorway and I really like that nothing stands out too much mm -hmm. but it just adds a little dimension and I yeah. did name the colorway for the contrast color here it's called abyss and I have a hank of each here and they'll be going in the shop later tonight yeah. so this one is abyss and this one is cinnamon oatmeal and they worked really well for color work together and what base is that this is the Tawny L base it's a hundred percent super wash wool which worked mm -hmm. really well for the color work and I don't have a problem using super wash yarns for color work I know some people just absolutely have to use 100% because that's what they're comfortable with. Wooly wool. Yeah, and my floats were... I got a little annoyed towards the end with having to catch my floats so often. <laughs> and I did, on the sleeves, look up a technique. If you just look up beginner color work, they'll teach you some different techniques. I know Very Pink's Knits has a tutorial on it. Mm -hmm. But also if you look up the philosopher's wool method for color work floats, there's a podcaster who has a video on it as well. And it's a way to catch your floats without having to twist the yarn. So Did check you that, that out. Better? I had to rip out the I got six rows into the sleeve, so about right here. And then I had to rip it out because it was looking really great but it was tighter than everything else and the main body of the sleeve was knit on a US 4. The color work in the pattern she has you switch to a US 5 to ensure that it will be stretchy and those floats will be nice and loose. Well even though going up to a 5 the floats were tighter. nice but they were tighter with that mm -hmm. technique. I don't know if it's just that I wasn't used to knitting with continental because I was oh. knitting continental at that point which isn't what I normally do I know mm. how but I don't normally do it for color work um, yeah so that is a technique I think I would practice on a hat that do a color a work idea. hat and practice that that would be a really good idea yeah I can knit continental but I'm much faster as a thrower yeah as an English English thrower yeah 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 Okay, so All right, so we have a winner. We do. For Bashful Armadillo. And thank you to everyone who entered and gave comments. It's We really enjoy interacting with all of you and yeah. reading your comments. And, and we enjoy finding new Indie Dyers, so it was really yeah. fun for us to share an Indie Dyer that we enjoy with you. Yeah. So we did Random Number Generator, and mm -hmm. it's number nine, Lori Madges. You are the winner, so congratulations! You can DM me on Instagram or you can email nightowlfibers at gmail.com with your address and info and we will get this beautiful skein of yarn out to you. So yeah. thank you to everyone who participated. Yep, um, 
I guess we're on to general chatter because that's all the knitting I have yeah. to show. Um, the only thing that really we've been doing lately is gardening and mm -hmm. I've been... Oh, I had so much fun the other day. We had to come up with a different kind of door for the chicken coop and yeah. your dad right now has shingles and his it's affected it's on his, his head, head and, and face yeah so it's the whole Itchy side of his skull and his one eye is swollen shut and he's still able yeah. to work um he's been to the doctor he's been to the eye doctor those there is yeah. no nerve damage at all yes that's a blessing that is a blessing he's really uncomfortable very uncomfortable so we had to do something with the door to get it to seal better and i said mm -hmm. bring all the tools out and i will do the cutting i will do this you know you just have to direct you just have to direct me and i impressed mm -hmm. him he was like your mom is scaring me. She's really good at this. Yeah, that's what he said when he came into the house, is your mom is scaring me. So I'm just like, did some injury <laughs> Did I soft happen? finger off? <laughs> and then he was like, she's doing so well. And I'm just like, we are capable women. Like, yeah. I had so much fun with his power saw and the air gun and the drills. Yeah. And we got that chicken coop all sealed up and real good now it's just we have yeah. to finish the outdoor run we temporarily mm -hmm. have them in a little fenced in area that I have to go out every day and put a tarp over it yeah and it's hot and it's a pain but yeah. until he's feeling better that's just how it's gonna have to be I don't like the chickens but Abby my white poodle does and yeah. so she was circling one of just the little bit of wire set up so they can be in the yard. We have older chickens uh -huh. and we have littler ones. And Abby tipped over and they were loose and on the run. <laughs> and so I frantically got the dogs inside so they wouldn't make any more chaos than there already was. We didn't want a dead chicken. And you got them I got, put yeah. back to safety. We have, um, we have four buff Orpingtons. We have four bared rocks. And those are pr mm -hmm. um, probably about eight weeks now, eight or nine weeks. And then for Mother's Day, he got me five Rhode Island Reds. You and were going, there, yeah. yeah. We were going to go out to Modern Skiing and I didn't realize her hours were 10 to two. So we stopped at the little garden center that was out there in Montgomery and they had little baby chicks. So he got me five Rhode Island Reds and they're about a month behind the other ones. So we can't put them together yet. So we have them in a separate yeah. little pen outside, and then we bring them in to the garage every night because we can't put them in the regular coop with the older yeah. ones. And that's the one that Abby tipped over, and so I just scoop mm -hmm. up all five of them, put them back in the pen. Yeah, and I ran inside with the dogs. <laughs> so You have been enjoying the garden immensely. Yeah, I really have. Yeah. Pretty yeah. soon we'll have fresh green beans to eat. We've already had some yellow squash and peppers and eggplant. eggplant. So, yeah, it's doing well. Mm -hmm. Doing really well. Yeah. So, um, uh, other than that, we haven't been doing anything else than watching Survivor. Yeah, we do. What else we had did we do? We had an outing. We social distance oh, while blueberry did. picking because I have a sunburn to prove it. You do. Um... So Memorial Day was opening day for the blueberry field. No, the, the 23rd. The 23rd. The Saturday okay. before Memorial Day. So okay. a few days before Memorial Day. And we were going to get up early in the morning so that we didn't have to deal with crowds. <laughs> that, that didn't happen. So we ended up going pretty much when the sun was at the fullest. And it was the hottest. But then... Um, there were no crowds. You wanted a snow cone, though, after we had picked, and it was hot, and it was very um yeah labor intensive it's not as easy as strawberry picking or blackberry picking or blackberries it was yeah. very labor intensive so you were getting a snow cone and we asked them was there a big crowd this morning and they're like there was a line for a mile or so or of, more or more of people waiting to get in hard work but definitely you, we were actually in the bushes Pulling yeah. down branches, trying to get the blueberries that were at the way top, and yeah. my arms have a few cuts on them, scratches, scratches. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it was hard work, but it was good. Mm -hmm. And Rachel made blueberry ice cream, which was yummy, dairy-free, yeah. of course. 
Yep, super easy and super really yummy. Good. Yeah, so we have blueberries in the freezer now. Mm -hmm. Next outing I want to do is to go get peaches. Okay. But that's that, a bit far of a drive. That's like a almost a four hour drive for us. Yeah. So that'll be just a curbside pickup because they're yeah. not allowing anybody in the fields to yeah. pick their own. But um, yeah, that's, I would definitely drive out and pick up fresh peaches. Yeah, it is nice that some of those outdoor activities like that, that there are respecting social distancing and mm -hmm. you're able to mm -hmm. still go and do some things with to get outside with caution yeah it was much better to do to do that than to go to the beach where everybody flocked to and yeah. there was no social distancing mm -hmm. so because we've got to really be careful um yeah with autoimmune diseases asthma your dad has diabetes and now shingles so yeah um, lots yeah. of things that put us in a weaker category and keep been, us at home yes definitely but we've been busy we have been busy thank goodness for crafts and gardening and yeah puppies <laughs> he says puppies and i say chickens yeah <laughs> uh, i haven't been reading any books how about you I have been reading Outlander, so when I was getting some pain from knitting the sweater, because I was knitting so much, like in my thumb and down mm -hmm. my forearm, mm -hmm. so I would then pick up my book and read for a little bit, and it's been enjoyable. It's the mm -hmm. second book of Outlander, Dragonfly and Amber. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so that one has been good. It's been enjoyable. Um, yeah, it's a long yeah. book though, so I'm going to be working on that one for a long time because I'm not a quick reader. I have quite a few books on my Audible. I just don't think to put it on when I'm knitting. Yeah. I, there's so much activity going on in the house with dogs running around, people walking through. I just can't yeah. concentrate on a book. And you don't think, like, because you can watch TV and watch podcasts and knit, but you don't realize how much concentration it takes for... To listen to, to a book yeah, and grasp, grasp the... The storyline and yeah. the characters. Because yeah. with the visual, you can just look up and be like, oh yeah, that character. Yeah. But if you have to try to connect the name to previous actions and that mm -hmm. kind of stuff... Mm -hmm. It's a little bit more challenging. I agree. It takes a little more focus. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, we will be back in two weeks, and yep. hopefully we'll have a finished object. Yep, or two. Or two. <laughs> Thank you for joining us, and stay healthy and safe. Yep, and, and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.